Top 10 most mid, you know Starfield's gonna be on here. Ah, right, we can put this on the YouTube channel as well. Yo, by the way, I, uh, I applied for YouTube Partner and they said uh, they denied me because I react too much. You could burn in hell, YouTube. I'm still gonna react. And speaking of reacting, Watch Mojo got a new, re uh, 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 new reaction bait for the boy. Uh, top 10 most mid games of 2023. You feel me? And I'm a, and guess what, YouTube? You can deny me for, for you can deny me for YouTube partner again. I'm putting this bitch up too. I'm putting this bitch. I'm put, I'm, I'm 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 putting this one up too. Now I am. I'm not gonna lie. I do see a lot of other channels that are monetized that also do react content. I'm pretty sure Hassan got like 12, uh, 12 like motherfuckers like that are full time employees pretty much that re upload his reactions. To YouTube and them motherfuckers be making bands, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Let, let a little brown boy from the East Coast try to do the same thing. You know they treat me like Nav. You know what I'm saying. They treat me like Nav, but it is what it is. I'm still gonna do it, baby. Okay. Top ten most mid games of 2023. So watch Mojo. Meet on me. Peep me. Peep me out. I swear to God. I swear to God. I swear to God. I swear to God. If you put Starfield on this list, I'm disliking. Look, I understand Starfield is not everybody's cup of tea. And I think that Starfield has a lot of issues with it. Don't get me twisted. But Starfield is not mid, like, let's relax. Like, let's stop the cap, okay? And if you're watching this on Omega Pro Plus, make sure you subscribe or I'm planning a pipe bomb. I mean, I don't think I can say that, actually. You wonder why YouTube won't give me partner. Never mind, I lied. Let's continue. Welcome to Mojo Plays. Oh my and today, God. we're looking at some games that weren't <sighs> bad, but they weren't great, and just kind of fell. Assassin's Creed like Mirage? That. I ain't played that shit yet. There. Can't walk in the light, you can't see in the light, I mean, this right? is a VR game. Nobody Full played this spoken. shit. Oh, hello. Yes. So, oh, perhaps you're smarter than you look. No. Yes. I think Forspoken is one of those games that got a really bad rap because of like the memes like this is what i'm saying like meme quality is like so big and prevalent in like all forms of media like whatever becomes a meme becomes the truth yo that's kind of deep when you think about it like confucius say type shit whatever becomes a meme becomes the truth so forespoken got memes to hell and high water and regardless of how good the game was going to be nobody was going to give this game a chance like after all those memes happen of it, having like that MCU writing or whatever. And you know what sucks too? Apparently, like once you get later on in the game, the game actually becomes like mad good. But obviously it's just too little too late at that point. And, uh, you know, it ends up stinking, unfortunately. So that's a really unfortunate rap for Forspoken. I would like to play it one day. I remember when we first f saw Forspoken, and it was like, yo, it was like a graphics demo at first for like Unreal Engine 5 or some shit. And it's like, yo, like this game looks crazy. Like, who is this? We got, you know, a black female lead. Like, this is dope. This is fine. Like, what's finna happen? And then the more they showed of that game, the worse it ended up getting, man. No. Yes. Outside of Final Fantasy. This game just looked like a tech demo, though. You know what I'm saying? Enix has been having a rough time lately. Alongside recent failures such as Marvel's Avengers and Babylon's Fall, and despite the enormous damn, those games did stink, push, huh? Forspoken landed with a thud upon release. I think it's fair to say that this game is, is mid, mechanically though. Mechanically solid, and the gameplay does have some great moments. Alongside its inventive traversal, the rest of the game felt empty and boring. I will say this though. I will say this though. I think Hogwarts looks like a much more polished video game than this one. But I think this game looks infinitely more fun to play. Like the magic and the powers in this game look way more fun to me than Hogwarts ever did. These issues could have been overlooked had the story been there to drive players forward. But instead, I personally don't care about the story. If the game is fun, I don't care. CW style dialogue from two unlikable protagonists who can't ever seem to stop talking. Here's the thing. I play JRPGs, my boy. And the dialogue don't get no worse. You feel me? So when everybody was talking shit about the dialogue in this game, like, yeah, it looked bad. Yeah, yeah, it sounded bad, obviously. But my boy, you ever heard some some Japanese colloquialisms, whatever that word is called, try to be poorly translated into English? It's bad, man, okay? It's just bad. I play JRPGs, you feel me? Trust me. I just had to see uh, uh, Titus laugh. You know what I'm saying? And here come the FF10 fans. Actually, he was laughing like that on purpose. Whatever, bitch. That shit is corny. 
The fact that there's even an option in the menu to turn down how often Cuff and Frey spout their That's awkward and terrible dialogue. Yo, Caleb, thank you for the prompt for 72 months. The developers knew this was an issue. Colon three. Don't tell me. This one's even worse. Oh than my god, yeah. Xenoblade is one of my favorite game franchises of all time. And Xenoblade, I'll show them a thing or three. Like, bro, you know, I've heard that line about seven billion times throughout my Xenoblade excursions, bro. I swear to God. I'm afraid so. Exo Prime. <laughs> We're assigning you to a new team. Oh, this game kind of looks fun, but then I never played it. See, I feel, like, I feel like the older I become, the more I'm like, the more I know my tastes. Like, there'll be games I get shown that look really cool, but I can already know that, like, I'm not playing that shit. You feel me? Like, Exo Primal was one of those games. But, like, if I was a young whippersnapper, you know what I'm saying? I bet, wow, like, that game looks kind of cool. Like, I, I might try that. I might play that. I know me by now. I was like, yo, that game looks like, a, looks like one of the, like, it looks like a very cool game that I'll never play type shit. Fans Maybe I'm just been different. Begging Capcom for a remake of Dino Crisis for years now. And instead... Capcom gave them a different version of time-traveling dinosaurs. Yet another hero shooter chasing Overwatch's coattails. Exo Apparently, Primal from everybody that I know that played this game, it was kind of fun. With generic shooting that not even the surprisingly excellent dinosaur designs could make engaging or fun. Mowing down hordes of portal invasion. See, they just needed Sasuke to come through and take care of all these dinosaurs. Microtransaction heavy systems in place for cosmetics and suits, in addition to a battle pass, did little to keep players engaged after the initial novelty wore off. Exo Prime was not like Overwatch. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't know. I wonder if there's gonna be any game on here that I've actually played. Also, why is the quality of this video so ass? Just give us the Dino Crisis remake, please. You've teased us long enough. Just take our money. Dino Crisis is one of those games that, like, I'm shocked has such a big following because I don't know anybody that's ever played that shit in real life. Look at me. Be honest. The Crew Motor Fest. Like what you saw? Ones in chat if you never heard of this shit. Well, those were just the tip of the iceberg. But what we the fuck? Go what step is this? Step. Follow me. Ubisoft's The Crew franchise has had some trouble finding an audience. I didn't know they made a new crew game. Back in 2014. And while the prospect of a fully traversable USA by car, boat, or plane is a novel concept. In practice, the results were always somewhere in the middle. Oh my with god, I think they try to copy Forza so hard with this one. With their third This entry, literally looks like Forza Horizon, but worse in every way. Ubisoft attempted to change the formula by copying someone else's. Namely, the Forza Horizon. Series. Yeah, yeah, okay. What I'm dog, I'm glad I'm not going crazy. This they copy Forza Horizon so bad. Just watch you. Afro, Yo, bah. And Jojo play Lethal Company. It was hilarious. Thank you for the 28 months. Nah, that Lethal Company video is fuck. It's amazing, man. Like, I, that's that's one of the most fun nights I've had on on gaming in a while. But thank you for the 28 months and thank you for watching Omega Pro Plus. Like, you're probably watching right now if you're listening to this video. While the map size saw a significant drop and the Hawaiian style locale was a nice change of scenery, the rest of the game was just kind of meh. The game itself still plays well enough, but lacks the depth of the Forza Horizon games and doesn't have enough of an identity of its own to stand out with not enough variety Damn. in the cars. See, I don't make it a thing to play mid-games, you feel me? So, exactly I wouldn't even be able to make a list like this. This is like literally Forza Horizon, it's crazy. Surprised you're still here, sir. Oh, isn't that like a famous actress? You know it is, Jack. I forgot her name. No, I'm ready. With some heavy hitters of the industry, I saw some folks that was on Copium trying to say this game was good when it came out. At the helm, Immortals had a decent chance to surprise everyone. I saw some heavy Copium when this game. Actually, it, didn't they pay like mad streamers to stream this shit? I'm pretty sure this was one of those games that was like pushed very heavily. It as well as an interesting gimmick of using magic and it still flops. That's crazy, arms. man. The game was extremely generic and hampered by a predictable story, arrogant protagonist, and cringy dialogue set in an uninteresting world. I'm 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 gonna say this. I am tired of first person games. I think there's games where it works and games where it doesn't, right? One of my biggest complaints about Cyberpunk is that it's first person. I'm sorry, like especially in a world that like you want to get absorbed in, you want to create your character and all that stuff. Like I'm trying to see my drip. 
Like, you feel me? Like, yeah, I might play Cyberpunk and do all the combat sections in first person, kind of like a Bethesda game, but I still want the option at least to go third person mode. You feel me? I'm trying to see my drip. I'm trying to see my character. I'm trying to you know, get absorbed in the world type shit. Like, I don't know why you would make a mage type game and have it be what is essentially a first person shooter, but instead you're shooting finger beams and shit at people. Like, who the fuck wanted that? The game was also technically unimpressive for being a next-gen exclusive game with much of the spell casting not having the expected impact or visual flair as well as simple like, look and at this. mediocre puzzle design and uninteresting boss encounters. There's still some fun to be had with the game, but much like the Callisto Protocol last year, we had higher expectations from some of the creatives behind high-profile games like Dead Space and Call of Duty. Yikes. Magnuson, shut up. Scourge of the shut Underworld. Up. Stay back, Demon Spawn. Have it thee. Fort Solace. I'll contact them. Okay, man. What is this, like, AI-generated game? Nobody has ever heard of this game. See if it's a false alarm. Well, how do you expect them to reply without power? If they respond, then it's a false alarm. OMG, they made this game up for this video. To be quite honest, Fort Solace Wait, this looks easily yes. could have slipped under a lot of gamers' radar had it not been Wait, this looks like driving the, the, the Mako from Mass Effect 1. ...studded cast. Making full use of the Unreal Engine 5, Fort Solace is an isolating exploration of a deserted Mars base strengthened by the performances of its main cast led by Troy Baker and Roger Clark. Wait. The rest of the game, honestly, isn't much of a game at all. How does this game Players suck? Are led down a surprisingly linear path with very little room for detours outside of a couple areas. And there's very little to do beyond slowly walking the empty corridors, piecing together the story's short, but albeit interesting mystery. Wait, this sounds gas? So you just walk around and it's a story game? Now wait a minute. The title is worth a play for its story and performances, but most gamers will find very little reason to revisit Fort Solace after the credits roll. <sighs> Look at her go! <laughs> okay, so actually, Death Stranding, you're just not just walking around, there's actually very intricate gameplay uh, in Death Stranding, so I think saying that you're just walking around Death Stranding is like actually... I think that's really uh, dismissive of uh, how good that game is and how inventive it is in a lot of its, uh, sorry, in a lot of its uh, gameplay elements. So uh, don't be an idiot, please. Come on. Horizon Call of the Mountain. He's awake. Rayas, my name is Blameless Murad, your king of art spy. Man, I'm gonna be real with you. The entire Horizon franchise belongs in the most mid games of 2023 list, to be honest. Like, like, let's talk about it. Let's stand on business. Let's stand on business, boys. And this is in VR, too. At least it looks, you know, for a VR game, it looks really good. One at least a rock to the head hasn't left you too confused. Gorilla's Horizon series has become a surprise hit for both Sony and the developer with Forbidden West. I'm surprised too, bro. Managing to far surpass the stellar original. So there was quite a lot of hype and expectation for a new entry in the franchise that brought the robot dinosaurs closer than ever. Released as a launch title for Sony's new PSVR 2, Horizon Call of the Mountain was also a spectacular showcase for Sony's new, more powerful tech, and the game itself made great use Man, I wonder why VR games, like, don't let you have arms. Like, what is up with that? Like, I know there's gotta be a technical reason for it, but I just, I don't know what it is. Killzone died for this? I was never big into Killzone either. The only Killzone game I really played like that was Killzone 4 because it was a release game for the PS4 and I got it on release. The PS4 no sensors on the features, arms? But it's over I mean, I guess. Climbing sections and limited combat mechanics didn't quite measure up to Gorilla's proper mainline entry. I can play the new Fortnite the season. Gameplay uh, I'm sure one of my friends will make me play it at one point. One. But I'm not like excited for it. Nicely into Horizon's overall lore, it felt more like a side quest than a necessary entry, even for diehard fans of the series. Yeah, because they're not going to make like a very important part of the story and a important part of the lore be a VR game that nobody's going to play. Because like, let's face it, nobody really has the PSVR 2 and VR just isn't like a main platform. So. I guess I'd better go. 
Walk in the light. Or at least stay out of the shadow. Isn't there gonna be a new Dead Fortnite? I have no idea. You know you got all like blood coming out of you. Did any of y'all play this? What? I can't Whoops. hear you. I got blood coming out of my ears. Well, I mean, what are we going to do? When a game enters production hell the way Dead Island 2 did, it's a miracle if the game ever sees the light of day. However, after numerous developers attempted to I remember when the, the first Dead Island break, came out, man. Game Buster Studios finally managed to get the game out the door and the long and Who remembers the zombie craze of the mid 2000s? Expectations. Who remembers? The problem, however, is that due to the game's long gestation If it was period, a Kingdom Hearts VR game it'd be lower important, true. Long since moved on and with nothing beyond some impressive gore tech to get players attention, there just wasn't enough meat on these bones to keep players invested, let alone interested. There's a Dying Light was like one of those games that like everybody thought was going to be ass and ended up being like surprisingly really damn good. Dying Light, man, like that was a good game. Here, it's just built from the remains of a shuffling corpse. <sighs> hey, at least we got supplies for a few months. <laughs> nah. Okay, so I am a, I'm on the Xbox Defense Force, and I talk about this every time I get the chance to. You know what game the Xbox gamers gas up, but is actually just dog shit? The uh, State of Decay games. Like, hopefully State of Decay 3 is good because, you know, they finally gave that studio the big bag to make, like, a big AAA budget game. But State of Decay 1 and 2 are not good. Like, I don't understand, like, why Xbox gamers, like, be on Copenhagen trying to say that that shit is good. You got that much food here? Food? Assassin's Creed Mirage. Hawk. You I don't even know anybody that played this. The Eagle's Path. Fans have long been hoping for a return to form for the Assassin's Creed series that had long lost its way by constantly reinventing State of Decay and Days Gone had the same journey. Real shit, actually. RPG elements and even foregoing the iconic hidden blade in some entries. Mirage answered many fans' complaints and brought the series closer to its glory days than it had been in quite some time, but the charm of those older titles was still missing, particularly when it came to the game's narrative. With previous titles, only a cursory Man, you gonna leave that plosive series in? was necessary, but since Mirage ties directly to Valhalla, those who didn't manage to complete the Viking epic were left confused. Which, by the way, a lot of people did not beat Valhalla because that game is like 60 hours for the base story alone, let alone if you did any side content. ...used by the game's end. While there might never be a return to the classic Ezio trilogy days, Mirage got pretty close, but just narrowly missed surviving its own leap of faith. I get it. Why the fuck did the base, like, just go crazy Starfield. there? Okay, take it. <sighs> you had one job. <sighs> Dislike. Can I report this video? I'm going to report this video for misinformation. Okay, let me not do that. <laughs> it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. Okay, before you get your pitchforks, just hear us out. Starfield is a great game. It has all the hallmarks of being one of Bethesda's best. The world building, factions, new game plus options, it's all here. That being said, from a technical standpoint, Starfield is at least two generations behind. And when compared to other contemporary titles, the issues become even more obvious. Like what? When simply boarding your ship or entering a separate room adjacent to a much larger area requires a loading screen, the immersion the game is attempting to create is immediately broken. This is in addition to the vast sections of emptiness made more obvious by the lack of vehicles simply because their aging creation engine couldn't handle it. There's still a solid game here to be enjoyed, but it might be worth waiting for the modding community to fix all the issues for the best possible experience with this one. Hmm, I find that to be rather surprising. Yeah, that buddy, you're out of here. <clears throat> you're canceled. The Xbox are gonna come for you. Like most of the games on our list, Atlas Fallen had a lot of potential and what the fuck is this game? Fun experience, but you're going to have to endure a lot of its shortcomings to have a good time. Developed by Deck 13, Atlas I don't even Fallen think mods can save Starfield. You're like actually stupid as fuck. I'm I'm just gonna be honest with you. Like, what? So what are the problems with Starfield 
that you think couldn't get updated or the mods couldn't fix. And like, I feel like the fact that Bethesda games are so moddable, like there's two different ways to look at things. You can either look at the game as it is in its vanilla state or look at the game as it is as a package, right? So Bethesda makes their games to be, uh, to be built with like great modding support. That is a benefit to that game, just like how Minecraft is, right? Like Minecraft vanilla, you know, you might not, like that game gets boring very quickly, but there's like a lot of different things you can do in something like Minecraft. And it's like kind of the same thing with like a Bethesda game. Also trying to say that like the exploration for one, modders, well, I don't understand what you, modders can fix that. They can make, they can put uh, constructs or factions or entire different storylines on different planets. Like that is something that modders could do. So I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. Like modders have been able to do crazy ass things with Bethesda games in general, Fallout games, uh, Elder Scrolls games. And to the point where people have made like full fledged, like separate video games within these games. So like, Starfield at its base, I think, has a lot of good groundwork to be built upon. So whether it's with patches or updates or DLC, I think Starfield actually has a lot to offer. But I don't think people are really appreciating that side of it and instead are trying to say that Starfield like is a flop or a failure because of those things. But a lot of the limitations that Starfield has are limitations that like allow it to like maybe not be as good of a game as a standalone product, but is a good uh, is a good enough game to where it can be built upon on top of it, right? And that is valid uh, or that is worth its own criticism in its own right, because a lot of like that 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 doesn't change what Starfield is today. Right. Like if you buy Starfield today, it is what it is. And like you, you should not buy Starfield today for what it could be next year. So I understand that aspect. And that is a valid criticism of that game. However, comma, I think that a lot of the shit that Starfield gets is kind of unwarranted in the sense of like people will make it out to be as if it's like this like terrible video game with like horrible writing and a horrible story and horrible gameplay mechanics. And I, I just don't think that's the case. I just could not agree more. And I don't see where people are getting that from. Like there are negatives to it, like the exploration aspect of it. Yes, that is a negative. But if you take the game for like what it is, there's a lot of other good things that it injects into that formula as well. A lot of the faction quests in that game are really fucking good. And I think that in terms of the main narrative, this is Bethesda's best main narrative. Like there is a point in the game that I haven't talked about yet because I don't want to spoil anybody. But at this point, I'm just about to fucking do it because like there's there's so much misinformation like about this game that I think is just fucking stupid. I think the game does go off to a slow start if you don't do any of the other side quests if you don't do none of the faction quests or nothing like that yes the main quest takes takes a long time to get started that is a negative i'm not going to defend that but starfield isn't the game where like you just go through and just do one thing it's a thing where you listen to the people in the world and like you do these different side quests or whatever the fuck like and that is a really dope uh, that is a really dope aspect of that game. And I think that should be, I think a lot of people should be like hip to that type shit. Um, it's not terrible, but it's worse than their other games. What is worse than their other games exactly? Because the way that I see it, like at its vanilla state, I think Starfield is one of their better modern titles. Like Skyrim might be better than it, but Starfield is better than Fallout 4 was at release it's better than fallout 3 was at release it's better than like pretty much every game outside of like skyrim and like oblivion like 
So like, what 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 are we like? What are we talking about here? So like, and 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 uh, Skyrim is a game that people go back to to this day. And that game came out fucking like twelve years ago. And if the base version, if the if the vanilla version of the game is, in my opinion, better than the base version of what Skyrim was, then who's to say that in another twelve years people aren't coming back to uh to Starfield in a similar way that they're coming back to Skyrim? And yeah, you can troll or whatever the fuck you want, but that is big competition. Like the Fallout games and the Elder Scrolls games, those are some of the most highly regarded video games of all time and it's there it's for a reason and to me i think starfield has a lot of that similar charm that those games do because i think the the narrative on the bethesda games has like switched a lot recently where people will go back and be like oh these games are like janky or they're like uh or you know whatever the fuck they say about you know bethesda games now which is all valid all valid criticisms but those things were like, these are not like new revelations. These are not like new secrets. And a lot of the things that I see people bitching about Starfield is like just like what Bethesda games are. So I don't really know what you were expecting. Because like this is like, this is a Bethesda RPG in space. It's like, that's literally what it is. There are aspects of it that I wish were better. I'm not saying this game is great. I think this game is probably like a seven, maybe like a six and a half or so. I don't think this game is like the best game of all time. But I think the narrative on this game is like niggas are trashing this as if it's like complete garbage when that's just not the case. And I think that if this game wasn't so tied to like, uh, that wasn't so tied to like the, the whole like console war bullshit and it's so like everybody got to have an opinion on something type shit, like it would not have this sort of reputation. Also, seven is not mid. Seven is a good game. Like, when you got to stop this IGN scale where eight is mid. Like, get a fucking life, get a job, buddy. Like, seven is not a mid game. That is a good game. A five would be a mid game. That game would be mid. But a seven is not mid. And I think that a lot of... Uh, you said seven and... Nigga, no, I did not. I said it's a seven and, like, to me... That game is probably like a seven. To most people, it might be like a six and a half. Now, let, 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 let's do some math here, Rue Six. Is six more than five? Yes. So that is above mid. Like, what are we talking about? That is above mid. If you want to be a technical head-ass motherfucker, yes, six is above five, so it's above a mid. And even if you were to say, like, okay, you want to call Starfield on the same level as that fucking Immortals game? You want to call Starfield on the same level as Assassin's Creed Mirage, as that VR game, as The Crew? Like, there's a clear difference between the quality of these games. Like, get your head out of your ass. There's a very clear difference in these kinds of games. Like, be so for real. You're just you're just you're just being disingenuous for the sake of being disingenuous. There's a clear difference between Starfield and whatever the fuck like this shit is. Like what there's a, a very clear difference. Like I'm not saying Starfield is the best game of all fucking time, but it is way better than the other games on this list. Like be so genuine. To be rather surprising. Yeah, I do fall. think that's rather surprising. Wait. Like most of the games on our list, Atlas Fallen had a lot of potential and can still offer a fun experience. But you're going to have to endure a lot of its shortcomings to have a good time. Developed by Deck 13, Atlas Fallen has a surprising amount of lore behind it. But unfortunately, very few, if any, of its characters or story beats are memorable or meaningful enough to get the player invested. I've never heard of this game, I'm gonna be honest. The barren desert is endlessly entertaining, and the combat is impactful as players face down hulking beasts, even if the camera can end up fighting them more than the actual enemies. Atlas Fallen is a throwback to old school action games like the OG God of War and Darksiders, and for those looking for decent combat and not much else, Atlas Fallen will provide Wait, some this shit looks entertainment. Fun. But it is far from the summit of what we've come to expect.
You wish you could experience Starfield with the mods on console? Doing? You can. Skyrim and Fallout 4 have mod support on consoles. So when mod support eventually gets released for Starfield, you will be able to play it on console as well. Yo, Cosmo, thank you for the tier two for 29 months. W's in the chat. Yeah. Hooray. We're the best of us. The last of us, type shit. Thank you, sister. Which game from 2023 was just okay to you? Let us know down in the comments. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these- I mean, yeah, obviously the mods are gonna be way more limited on console because they have to make sure that compatibility is there. But like all the, like a lot of the more uh, popular mods end up getting console support on like Skyrim and Fallout. Obviously, if you want mod support, you know, PC is the best way to play that shit. Like it just, I mean, it just is what it is. You can't really deny, you can't really work your way around that. Um, but I mean, it, it does exist to some degree on console, but I don't think you're gonna be able to get like the, the game warping, like game changing mods to work on console in the same way that you would on PC. But I really don't know. I've never done mods on uh, console, so I can't really say. Yeah, it makes sense that Sony would be a lot more closed off. Um, but yeah, man, that was top 10 most mid games of 2023. And uh, yeah, that's interesting. Let me know what you guys think. Starfield, game of the year type shit. I got, I got, I'll make it answer fast.